Hello, this is Anthony Rowe from the AbletonCookbook.com, and today I'm going to talk a little bit about the launch mode um, in the clip view uh, of Ableton Live. And what we're going to talk about specifically is Legato, this button right here, which is something that I literally had never used until probably six months ago. And um, part of the reason I didn't use it is because a lot of the stuff that I wanted to do with it, um, I kind of figured out how to do uh, through a different route. But the thing is that definitely it's a useful thing um, to to use if you... Uh, if you're trying to, to accomplish some of these, these goals quickly. So um, what does Legato do? Legato basically will allow you to start clip playback um, uh, within the clip as opposed to the beginning of the clip. So what that means is functionally is if you have a clip um, and you start playing, let's say and you, you're, uh, one clip is playing and you trigger another clip Instead of the second clip playing from the beginning, as it does in normal clip uh, clip play, it'll start wherever you left off from the first clip. So that means that if you have a drum break and you press the second uh, second clip, let's say on on the second beat, it'll start that second clip on the second beat as opposed to at the beginning. So this is useful for a whole bunch of effects. But let me show you, just give you an example of how to use it, um, and it'll become a little bit clearer, I think, in uh, the example. So. Um, right here in in uh, track one here, I have a clip of um, the Amen break. It's a pretty famous break here. So, certainly, most of you probably recognize that break from every drum and bass song ever written. Um, so, <clears throat> what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to first. What I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to do something that, that I think is really important, which I'm going to crop the sample. And what that means is I'm going to basically reduce the clip size. See, so right now I, I actually sampled um, Amen My Brother, uh, the actual song, and I just isolated this one two-bar loop. But the thing is, is that now, right as it is right now, every single time I press this, um, the computer has to look at this entire file. So what we're going to do is we're going to reduce the size of this sample, okay? So you're going to control click or right click you're in a crop sample and now you'll see it's just this two bar thing and I actually do this a lot um, whenever I'm using uh, just a small portion of a song this way uh, I think it actually just lessens the CPU load on your computer which is something you gotta always be attentive to um, so what I'm gonna do right now is I'm going to uh, duplicate this clip a couple times so let's just duplicate it once so I'm gonna select this clip I'm going to press Command D, and you're going to see it's going to duplicate it exactly, including all the loop markers and all that good stuff. And I'm going to make them both legato. And the way that I'm going to make them both legato is by holding down Shift and selecting the other one, and now I've selected both of them, and I press legato. And you'll see that now they're both legato. So that's how, once again, that's how you um, change multiple parameters at the same time. So, um, and now, as you can see, what I've done... I press Command K, and I assigned I assigned um, keyboard buttons to each one of these slots. So when I press A, it's going to play this clip. Press S, it's going to play this clip. And this is something that I do when I don't have a MIDI controller handy. So the way you would do this is go to Key Map Mode, and let's see, I'll show you how to do this. Um, and I'll eliminate these other ones here for the purpose of illustration. And once you're in key map mode, all you would do is select what you want to map it to and press A and press S here, or whatever key you'd like to. And once again, just so you know, you can actually make them uppercase as well. So um, so if you wanted, so you, you have actually double the amount of keys on here than, than there are keys on the computer because the shift key works as well. All right, so... Now you'll see, if you watch the playback, I'm going to trigger these clips, and you'll see that it won't replay from the beginning. So I, I actually have the quantization pretty low here to about a 16th note. So.
Now you see I'm switching back and forth between these clips, but the play is interrupted. Whereas if it wasn't legato, go ahead and take off legato here, you'd see that it would start right from the beginning. So the legato basically allows you to move from clip to clip uninterrupted. Now the reason that I usually use this with clips of the exact same size is that way you don't have any confusion. Um, because all the clips are the same size, uh, it's going to take it up, it's going to restart playback at, at exactly the, the place where you left off in the other clip. So this allows you to do a couple of things. One, I'll show you um, something that I do quite a bit here, so I'm just going to duplicate all of these, as you can see. And what I'm going to do is um, this actually, one thing that you hear a lot, in, especially in drum and bass, um, is the 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 amen break being very chopped up but also um pitched uh a lot so you'll have little snippets of the break pitched up and pitched down and um that's kind of a, a trademark drum and bass thing but it's an effect that i like to to do a lot of times like pitch up a break just for a little snippet and what i can and i used to do that just um on the arrangement view but what you can do now is just do it in real time so let's say i have this first clip and i pitch it up five right so and it kind of has that pinched sound that drum and bass has. And I'm just going to go through these and make everyone a slightly different pitch. So that one was seven. This one is nine. And I don't do this in one um, semitone increments because that's kind of not really that noticeable. Um, so I do it in two semitone increments. But you can really do whatever you want. So go through here. Make them all like this. And this top one should probably be pretty ridiculous. So you can see that each one of these is a different pitch. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and uh, so they're all in, they're all in legato mode, as you can see, because we duplicated the original that were already in legato mode. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and key map them all to a different key, so I can just play them in real time. All right, so you can sound like this. So you have something like that, and then like clearly I, I, a lot of that I didn't like, but a lot of it I did like. So what you can do, and what I always do, um, is I always record everything, and I'll just mess around with it, and then um, I'll go back and take out the parts that I like, and I will uh, put that into the song. So what you can do is like maybe if you um, want, you could just sort of record into arrangement view, play some things that you like, um, go back and cut those out, and then join them into their own clip and then uh, put them back in the session view. Or alternatively, what you could do is you could um, just play it live if you want to put it in your live set and do something like this. So the good thing about that is that you're never going to um, miss the downbeat. So it's a good way to add some variation without having to worry about, if, especially if you have the quantize really low, having a train wreck where you don't hit that break uh, again on the one. So what I've also done over here is I have um, taken this same clip and I've basically affected it a whole bunch of different ways. So if you go down here, um, you'll see it's a whole bunch of different parts of the same clip. And what I basically did is I just looped this, um, this break, the amen break, threw a whole bunch of effects and just resampled it and then went back and chopped it up into its own clips. And then what you can have is um, sort of an uninterrupted.
So what you can do is if you have the same clip multiple times, you can affect it all differently and you could even pitch it up if you'd like to. You can combine the two techniques and then play it through um, either into arrangement view and use it for one of your compositions or you can do that live. So hopefully this has uh, helped a little bit uh, explain what the legato mode does and hopefully you found this interesting and hopefully useful as well. Um, if you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave me a comment on the blog or uh, you can hit me up on the Twitter, okay? Have a good day.